guess who else didn't make the Olympic team? Well, you guys don't need to guess. It's already in the title, it's in the thumbnail, it's in everything. Oli Olevi did not make Team Finland. I guess I was wrong, guys. I said that Yolevi was going to be a lock for this year's Olympic team. Instead, the defensive core of Team Finland, they got themselves Miko Lettinen, Tommy Kavisto, Lasse Kukkonen, Sami Lapisto, Yuso Heitinen, Miro Heiskinen, Mika Koivisto, and At Otamaha. So, there's no really young guys on this team. The only two young guys who are on Team Finland that really do deserve to be there, in my opinion. You got yourself Eli Tolvanen, who is a forward, as well as Miro Heiskinen. Now, Heiskinen, he's a player who didn't necessarily have the absolute best world juniors. And to me, the fact that Olio Levy was selected as one of the best three players for Team Finland, whereas Heiskinen was not... Yolevi was actually the only defenseman selected in that category, that spoke to me and that said, okay, Yolevi performed higher than Heiskanen. Yolevi was just purely, just based off of the analysis and what the coach's feedback was, Yolevi was the best defenseman at the World Juniors. However, Heiskanen makes this team Finland and Yolevi does not. Keep in mind though, Heiskanen has been battling some upper body injuries which is why his performance at the World Juniors may have been hindered. Maybe not, but who knows. Obviously, it's kind of an important deal, right? So, if we want to talk about Yolevi, it's, it's just disappointing, man. I wanted to see Canucks go to the Olympics. My first thought was, okay, it's going to be Adam Gaudet. Adam Gaudet's going to get a chance. But Team USA only took like three NCAA players, and yeah, Gaudet didn't make it. Team Sweden next up. Elias Pettersson, he's small, he's not heavy, and he doesn't get the cut either. Instead, they go with a little bit of an older core, guys who are a little bit more physical, who are a little bit harder to shove off of the puck instead of Pettersson. Okay, who else do we got? Well, the last opportunity that I believed we had to have any Canucks, that don't include like Lyndon Vey and all those guys in Team Canada, to have any Canucks make the Olympic team, it was Oli Olevi. And in my mind, I was like, okay, Yolevi, he was on a loan from the NHL over to the TPS. He's eligible to make the team. He doesn't play for the NHL. He's 19, 6'3", 198, so he's got a big build. He's a good, strong player. And I thought for sure he was going to make the team, but turns out Team Finland is going with another kind of older, more mature core for their team. And the only two young guys that they took were Heiskinen and Tolvanen. Don't get me wrong, those guys absolutely deserve to be there. But I'm just kind of surprised, man, that Ole Olevi didn't make it. But of course, we shouldn't take this as kind of a hit on Olevi. We shouldn't see this as another instance of a setback. We shouldn't see this as Olevi isn't good enough to be the player that we want him to be. Well, if we take a look at what the other people are saying about Yolevi, like, there hasn't been anything else but praise. Like, his game is trending upwards, guys. And in terms of the team that he does play for, the TPS Turku, I don't want to say that he is the best defenseman on this team. Because if you look at the points, okay, Yolevi, what has he got? He's got 16 points in 24 games. He's actually fourth on his team in defenseman points. And if you look at the other defensemen that are above him, um, Ikai Heikinen, He's got 27 points in 42 games. You got yourself Lucas Ekistal Johnson, which is 20 points in 42 games, and Elmeri Aronen, 17 points in 39 games. Of course, in the points per games category, it is kind of different because Yolevi only has 24 games played. He's on here on a loan, of course. But none of these guys made the Olympic team either. In fact, nobody from the TPS Turku made the Olympic team, which is kind of astonishing if you take a look at the standings of the Liga as the TPS Turku, they sit at fourth in the whole league. They got themselves a record of 12 wins, five losses, two overtime wins, and five overtime losses for a total of 45 points. They're actually tied for third right now, and that's in the whole league. This league is pretty good, and 
this team, it's just filled with a lot of good, high-scoring players that are getting up on the score sheet. You've got a lot of players who are getting points on this team, and none of them were able to make the Olympics. So, what does that say about the team? I don't, I don't know. It's a good team that doesn't really have strong individual talent, I guess. You could say whatever you want, but if you take a look at all the players who were taken in the Olympics, you got a whole bunch of KHL guys. There are 26 players who were announced, and of these 26 players, there's one SHL player, so that's the Swedish League. There are three players from the NLA, which is the Switzerland League. If you want to take a look at the local, the Liga, the Finnish Hockey League, there's only six, which means that the remaining 16 players are all from the KHL. All of these players, 16 of them out of the 26, are KHL players, which kind of solidifies the kind of idea that Team Finland was trying to build here. Because just looking at the rosters, looking at the players that they were taking, okay, they wanted an older core of guys who played at a high level and who were used to being shoved around with big, tough opponents and everything. So, Holy Olevi not making the team, it, uh, I am disappointed. I wanted them to make the team. I thought he was the strongest defenseman at the World Juniors. So did the coaches over there, too. But that doesn't mean that he won't be a good player. Sammy Salo, he's basically the defensive coach over there. He's been saying really good things about Yolevi, and he's not afraid to sugarcoat the fact that Yolevi needs to improve on some things. Every time you ask Salo a question, okay, what's Ole Yolevi like? He tells you. He's like straight up, yo, he needs to work on this. This is not where it needs to be. But everything else, like, he's got it down. And he has nothing but praise for the kid. And Sammy Salo, he's, well, he's a pretty good Canucks defenseman, if I don't say so myself. If we take a look at the conversation that just went on between Rick Dollywall and the Canucks Swedish scout, Lars Lindgren, he was asked about Ole Olevi as well, and he said that he's really good. He said that he's taking steps in the right direction. And the only question is here, does he need more time to take the bigger step into the NHL, or is he ready now? Of course, training camp later this year, that will decide that. But for now, we got a player who I believe is going to be good for us. I said that he's not going to be a top two. He's going to be a top four. He's going to be like, his potential is like a Dan Hamuse kind of level. And I know he played poorly in the preseason. Maybe that's why he didn't get a second look and he was sent right back over and he was loaned out to TPS. But things happen, guys. And only Olevi, I don't want to see this as a step backwards. I don't want to look at this and say it's another failure of a Canucks player. If he wasn't a Canucks player, he would have made the team. No, I don't want to say that, guys. I know that there is a perceived bias by us that we feel the media and the NHL and all the other hockey associations have against us and our team, but whatever. Whatever. The Olympic team has decided. Heiskanen, he deserves to make it, for sure. He's elite. Yolevi, I feel like he deserved to make it as well, but ultimately, what are you gonna do? Four out of the eight total defensemen taken were from the KHL. The other four... They're all Finnish leaguers, and one of them was Heiskanen. So it looks like the only Vancouver Canucks that we're going to be able to cheer for at this year's Olympic Games are Lyndon Vey, Mason Raymond, and Willie Desjardins. All those old guys. I wanted prospects to go, but they didn't end up going. Feels bad, man. Feels really bad. And I just hope that by the time the 2022 Olympics rolls around, that's when the NHL is going to be like, yo, we're going again, and then that's when a whole bunch of other Canucks prospects are going to make it. Maybe Besser makes Team America, like he was in that proposed article on Sportsnet. That would have been glorious seeing him with Austin Matthews and Goudreau, but of course we're getting robbed by that because the greedy NHL is total evil and they don't want to do what the fans want or whatever, but who knows? If the Olympics do come around in 2022, and let's say Elias Pettersson, he's 23 years old. Ole Olevi, he's a little bit older than that. He's 25. These guys are starting to enter their primes, and I think 2022 is the year, guys. And it really, it upsets me that I have to say that. I'm like, yo, I, I, we're gonna make the Olympics. Like, God, Dad, Peterson, and Olevi, they're gonna make it. And now we're like, nope, we're gonna wait till 2022. But... 
Yeah. That's the way it goes. I guess. You love you didn't make the Olympics. And it doesn't really... It doesn't feel good. He's a good player, though. That's basically the whole video. This was just rambling, guys. I apologize if you got bored of this or whatever. Hope you guys enjoyed. Regardless, Twitter, Reposting, Gaming, and bye. <laughs>